What's up guys, Zalf here back with some more on Muji and uh, we've got maintenance coming up for the next three hours so I guess it's best for me to upload a video now. Today we're going to talk about the R-rated Shikigamis, uh, we're going to talk about the essentials, then we're going to go through all 29 R-rated Shikigamis that are currently in the game uh, and we're going to discuss a bit of the strategies of what you can do with them. So let's have a look at what I currently have what I use. I have Ami, uh, I've, sorry, not Ami on that, Shuzu. Shuzu, pretty essential unit. I think going forward, in PvP, a lot of people will be using this unit. She's also really good in PvE. Uh, one thing, one thing, no, I would say that double pools you will use for your realm rate still. While for PvP, I think moving forward, people will start moving to Shuzu teams. Yeah. People will probably climb with their double pulls, then once they reach a certain tier or a certain score, they'll start shifting to like tanky Shuzu teams. So cool, let's have a look and see what Shuzu does. Alright, uh, this is the money maker right here. Water circuit. So, pain shared is pain divided. What happens is she connects the water inside the bodies of all allies to form a circuit. Right. Damage is shared among all interconnected units when any of the units receive damage. An interconnected ally's HP is also restored by 5% of Shuzu's HP after the ally's turn. The connection disappears at the start of Shuzu's next turn. Skilled up becomes a two-turn connection and skill up some more. The damage taken by an interconnected ally decreases by 5%. Okay. She also has this cool passive, Unhurt Counter where all allies have 50% chance of increasing their crit damage by 5% when Shuzu takes damage. Crit damage boost effect increases to 20% crit damage once skilled up, right? So basically what happens is she connects this water circuit and everybody, all the interconnected allies become like one HP bar. So if, if they do a single target hit to any, it's, it's gonna hit all of it so the damage will be shared equally. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. After that, we have Hitotsume, who synergizes very well with Shuzu also. Um, what you want is this skill, Diamond Sutra, to be maxed right here. Uh, it's a passive skill. I'll protect my master and everyone else. Hitotsume chants a Sutra when he takes damage, increasing the effect res of all allies by 10% and reflecting back 10% of the damage taken for one turn. This effect cannot be dispelled. Once skilled up, effect res increases to 20% and the portion of damage reflected increased to 20%. Of course, this won't proc all the time. It's a chance to proc. And um, why don't I have this skilled up? All right, now, now I have all skilled up, right? Cool. Okay, this statue smash is um, its third skill, which you don't really have to use it. Uh, Hitosumi charges and hits one enemy to with his stone statue, dealing damage equal to 163% of his attack and has a 25% chance of inflicting days on the target for one turn. 25% chance of inflicting days. Days is a stun. Okay, days in this game is a stun. So pretty cool stuff. It scales with the attack though. I have really shit attack on him. Doesn't really matter. Um, I, I only want him to be high HP for. Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm digressing. So basically, he's a damage mitigator, right? And also increase effect rest. So very good support unit. Next up, we have Kusa. Essential, not really. I mean, she's just a healer. Uh, oh yeah, I would like to apologize about the tree spirit um, soul. Because a lot of people have been telling me that Tree Spirit works. Cool. If Tree Spirit works, cool. I don't actually have a Tree Spirit Soul set that I can test right now. Um, yeah, I only have one. So yeah, I don't have a Tree Spirit Soul set that I can test. I'll just take people's word for it that Tree Spirit works. You, She also can crit. Uh, he heals are all attack based, you know. She restores HP equal to 50% of her attack. So healers can also crit in this game. So you can do like attack crit rate attack or attack crit damage attack. However you want to do it. Or you can even do triple attack. Um, the third skill restores the HP of all allies by 87% of her attack. 
continues to restore the HP of each ally by 22% of attack on each of their next two turns. Pretty cool. She's a healer. I mean, essential? Not really. There's better healers out there. Ibisu, Momo. Uh, coming up, the new SSR healer is coming. That, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm waiting for her. Like, probably drop after the patch, right? Yeah, I'll do some summons later, maybe. Uh, then we have Yama Osagi, super, super essential unit. Uh, it's just the bunny that we speak of. Uh, it's because of a skill here, bunny dance. That annoying chant that she has, right? Yama Osagi dances to motivate her allies, raising their move bar by 30% and increasing both her and their attack by 10%. So it's like 20% increase. So she's an attack bar buffer and also increase attack by 10%. She also has a pretty cool ring toss, which has a chance to turn the, the, the target enemy into a paper doll. Effect cannot be dispelled and seals the passive skills. Most often times it, it would not work, but yeah. You want her for this bunny dance anyway. So we've got one essential unit, two essential units, three essential units. Now we go to the fourth essential unit, Amiona. Super, super unit. Uh, because of Sky Tears, Amiona Ceaseless Tears become Rain that has a 50% chance of slowing all enemy speed by 10 for 2 turns, dispelling 1 of their buffs and 6-7 chance of dispelling up to 4 of the debuffs on all allies. So she can cleanse, okay it's a chance, 6-7% chance to cleanse, alright, and also can dispel buffs on the allies, all right, so she's like a stripper somewhat. Uh, also once speed, uh, once powered up, as 100% chance of triggering slow, so that means 100% activation rate after that is uh, effect resist versus effect hit kind of thing. So it can, can strip up to 2 of the enemy's buffs, can dispel up to 4 of your own debuffs, and decreases speed by 20 for the enemy. So pretty cool. Uh, I've used her in a fight against Misato. Like uh, I brought my team, my, my, I brought my, my cancer team, which is um, Shuzu. Amiona, Utengu, Momo, Ibisu, and, and, and I won against him, and, and Misato's like top 10 or something like that. <laughs> They've been duels yesterday, like, he was still sore about it, it's like good pick with the Amiona, because Amiona does really well against counter teams. And uh, next up, we have one of the most essential units in the game, Zashiki. i probably say she's one of the best things that you need. Uh, really, really essential early game. I'm uh, moving forward. She's also very essential until we get another unit that can replace her, who is also a lighter. I forgot the name, but yeah, I, I forgot the name. But people have been telling me there is another lighter that will come in the future. So she, she has this trade-off skill. All right, sacrifices 30% of her current HP to gain two spirit orbs. Actually, it skills up, become three orbs, and sacrifice only 20% of her HP. And she also has. Uh, this Surrender Pity, which is a passive, um, gains 3 at the beginning of the battle, she gains 1 extra starting orb, but once skill up becomes 3 extra orbs at the start of the battle. It's pretty cool. Then we have the Superb Tank, Samurai Axe. Right, uh, I hate fighting Samurai Axe, that taunt is so annoying. Unbreakable is the taunt, uh, reduce the damage he takes by 20%, his speed by 50%, and inflicts taunt which can be dispelled, it, okay, it, it can be dispelled, it's just that the dispellers we have in the game aren't really that great right now. So it's AOE Taunt, okay. Uh, affected enemies have a 50% chance of being forced to use normal attack against Samurai Axe on the next turn. This chance is increased by 5% for each 25% HP he loses. So, and his damage re damage reduction that he takes is up to 60%. Yeah, pretty nice. And also has a defense boost for each 30% of his HP loss. Pretty cool unit. I haven't built mine yet. Mine is still like still waiting for souls. But yeah, once once I once I have but once I have him built, I, I will use him. What else? Uh well that's the essentials, right? So one essential Hito not really essential, you can use him, I like to use him, so let's let's not put him as an essential, he's a niche. The essential will be Shuzu, Amiona, Zashiki, Badi, Samurai X, these five. Okay, these five are essential. 
Now let's go on to the niche ones, which I don't have right now. So, so we've got five essentials. Then we go, go to the notable ones, where we can go to collection, Shikigami, R. There's 29 R Shikigamis in the game. We'll start with Mio. Uh, I'm not going to go through their skills in detail. I'll just say usable, but you probably have better options. Sashiki is super essential. Koi. Koi is pretty cool. You know, it has a, a, a forms bubbles into energy shields to protect all allies for two turns. Bubble shield, but the bubble shields each absorb damage equal to 12% of Koi's max HP. It increases by another 8% for the damage absorbed and also forms water into barrier to trap an enemy for two turns. Trap enemy can only use normal attacks to break the barrier. The bubble cage can withstand damage equal to 150% of Koi's attack and deals damage equal to 0% of Koi's attack which then and decrease targets crit by 20% while the cage is active. Yeah, you can read through this. Some people use her. I might build her maybe, but then again due to the lack of resources, I might not build her. Uh, Kume Neko, pretty cool in a counter team, you know, she has all these counters and she also like revives uh, with 20% HP once she's KO'd. So yeah, pretty cool. Tanuki, another pretty pretty cool unit. Alright, this guy has a taunt on a basic attack. Right, you can put him in a counter team. Not, no, not, not say in a counter team. I'll say put it in a Shuzu link team. Right, I, I don't. I keep saying counter team. I don't know why. I'll just say in a Shuzu link team. You can put him uh, in the link, and you can put Scarlet Set, which counters. So essentially, a counter team, God. Right. So he has fifty percent chance of inflicting taunt on a basic attack. Nice. Uh, he also has a, a a chance, a passive chance to uh, fall asleep and uh, restore his HP. Right, and um, also has an AOE HP base damage, max HP base damage. Pretty nice, pretty cool. I mean, you probably only want him for the for the basic attack. Oh yeah, Kappa AOE attack, uh, AOE attacker, and also stacks attack. All right, so pure water amplifies Kappa's spiritual power at the end of his turn, increasing his attack by fifteen percent. Effect stacks up by by up to four layers so each layer increases attack by 30% so 30 by 4 so it's another 120% stack not bad I guess AOE attack it's okay Oguna pretty cool I've seen people I've watched videos of people using Oguna so sacrifices himself to revive all KO allies restoring their HP by 30% of Oguna's max HP once evolved, um, it also increases their move bar by 30%. This one, nothing much to talk about. But yeah, so it's AoE revive and increases their move bar. Not bad. Then we have Dojo. Okay, let's look at this, right? I'm not sure about this. Sacrifice 30% of her current HP to restore the HP of another ally by 10% of her max HP. The healing effect also affects Dojo when her HP drops below 30%. See, one skill up, HP restore increased by 50%. Skill up again, HP restore increased by 50% again. That's 100%, but it might not be 100%. It might be 50% of 30 and another 50% of 30. Perhaps. I'm not sure. This description is really misleading. But if, if it is 100% HP restore then, and it's only taking 20% of health, then it's pretty OP. Need to probably test this. If some kind soul could like type in the comment section about what dojo skills actually do, that would be pretty good. But this is what I'm saying, that the descriptions are pure bullshit in this game. You know? Moving on, we have Gaki, um, who devours an enemy. Pretty cool. Kaki tries to devour an enemy, dealing damage equal to 100% of his attack, has a 30% chance of devouring an enemy for one turn. Right? Uh, Gaki has a 50% chance of spitting out the target, removing all of his buffs when he receives an attack. Each button mark increases his chance of devouring by 30%. If Gaki fails to devour a target, he gains 1%, well, one button mark. So basically, when he devours, it's like a silence. Uh, the, the, the target cannot use his skills. Oh, yeah. Then we've got Kodokushi. It's a pretty gimmicky one. Let's not talk about it. Moving on. We've got Karasu Tengu. If you don't have an AOE damage dealer, let's just say you are 
Like you had no luck, you came into the game, you couldn't get Ubume, you do not have any other AoE damage dealers. He's not bad. Uh, he dispels, alright, um, I will eliminate all evil. Kastengu has a 90, one skill up, 90% chance of removing one debuff, one skill up, two debuffs from one ally at the beginning of his turn. Not bad, you know, like uh, he can just, but he's only one ally and this AoE debuff has a stacking, can increase damage up to 100%. For each KO enemy, which is pretty cool. We got Kamikoi. Kamikoi is you can use for CC. Second skill has a sleep, chance to inflict sleep for one turn and one enemy. Uh, while the third skill is an AoE attack, um, and once evolved, the it will add a description saying that it will also delay move bar by thirty percent. So yeah, pretty cool. AoE delay move bar. Not bad. Warrior Soul. It's like AoE um, heal down and also a uh, chance to possess all enemies for three turns. Uh, gimmicky, but could be usable. I'll be on down with this caster. Very such a unit. Kyonshi Ototo and Kyonshi Imoto, I, I don't think very highly of them, their skills don't really like impress me so I'm gonna skip them, some ranks we talked about it. Ushino Toki, not bad, uh, has a chance to do a paper doll and also this curse fire um, increases damage takes by what? Chance of enemy being cursed increases 40%, extra damage taken by curse enemy increases by 15%. So yeah, this is pretty good for Kirin and stuff. Not bad. Hito, we've talked about it. Tesso, pretty cool unit. Um, has an AoE attack. Alright. Getting damage equal to 40%. Uh, commands countless gold coins to fly at all enemies twice. So AoE attacks twice. Alright. Has a... F each, attack, each time getting damage has a 50% chance of increasing enemy take damage taken by 30% for two turns. So AoE debuff to increase the damage taken. So it's not defense down, but it's increasing your damage. What that means when you deal damage, the enemy takes like 30% more damage. It's not bad. And he also has this pretty cool passive. Insurance policy. 40% chance of decreasing the attacker's attack by 20% when he receives an attack. Winning a battle with Tesso deployed grants an 8% coin bonus. So if you're doing like coin spirit, you want to put like one AoE damage dealer, you want to put four Tessos, so you have like a 32% coin bonus. However, I've, I've been told that when you're doing coin spirit and you have multiple Tessos, the amount that you can get is up to like 13k coins, which is not bad. Shuzu with Disgusta. Kanko is like a single target damage dealer. Gimmicky still, like he can go up to 500%, I think. Yeah, up to 500%. I don't know, could be, probably, could be really good, but like, he needs to like hide in his bamboo pipe or something. Yeah, he needs to hide in this bamboo shelter to have these stacks, and then does a single target, like 500% increase attack. Probably worth it, you know, you can try it out. Bunny, very essential, talk about it, Kusa is alright, it's a healer. Chocho, pretty cool healer. Um, increase Chocho speed to 30 whenever by, by 30 whenever the ally with the lowest HP loses 20% of its HP. This is one skilled up. Uh, d dispels 3 debuffs for one ally, restoring ally's HP 25% of her max HP. And restores ally's HP. Yeah. Pretty cool healer. Like, I mean, it's a healer. What can you talk about, right? Uh, sorry, I, I'm going to do this video first. Yamawaro, I faced one earlier. Um, he has a... 8% plus a fair hit chance of inflicting days on the enemy for one turn when he deals damage. So it's an AoE attack and also attacks for three turns. So it's like three chances of inflicting days. Not bad, I guess. Kubinashi could be cool. I'm not sure. I mean, just reading from the, from, from, from the... This is passive which steals a crit from the target for one turn when he deals damage. All right. So you can steal damage from damage dealer, and also at the same time has a ignores forty percent of target's defense. So it's a single target ignore defense unit, which could be very very good. I don't know. Need to actually build him up to do this. 
Satori, nothing much to say. Finally, we have the 29th R rated Chiki, which is Jiki Keru. I've watched some videos, people have talked to me about him, and unfortunately, I've fed like 15 copies of him. I'm like, oh my god, I've shined 15 copies of him. Oh wow, what a mistake. If not, I would have kept multiple copies of him and, and tried to use him. Why? Because let's, let's talk about skills here. Uh, skill 2 throws a number of mahjong tiles at a target based on dice he's, he rolls. So he's, he rolls like his mahjong tiles, right? And after that, they, they've, they've got like, I think it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 6. Like, it's a dice, like 6 dice, right? So yeah, if, if it's 6 times, it's 50 times 6 is 300% of his attack. That's a lot, right? And also has this passive. When Jikikaru is KO'd, he uses Tile Fling on all enemies without spending any orbs. This also revives Jikikaru immediately if there are equal number amongst the dice he throws. So if he like throws a 6 or throw, uh, like throws 2s or something like that, uh, it also restores 10% of the of that number, you know, times 10%, so like 10 times 2 or 10 times 4, um, the maximum equal number. Crit damage is the maximum equal number, yeah. Uh, it's AOE attack. Once he dies, he also does AOE damage. You know, like it's RNG based, but it could be a fun unit. Here's the thing: I'm thinking about this unit, and the next thing that comes to mind is this soul, Tomb Guard. For every one percent HP loss, crit damage increased by six point six percent. So if you die, it's a hundred percent HP loss. That crit damage increased by sixty percent. Right. And yeah, it's like AOE attack. Then he gets hit, he dies, he comes back, revives, does another AOE. Yeah, you can put like multiple units of him. All right, put multiple units of him. Have like if you're slow, let's just say you're slow. They kill your team, but he's in the team. He comes back, you know, like with the RNG, you might wipe them out. It's like, if you guys played Summoners more, alright, you know Pisama? So this is like the Pisama of on Myoji, but he's only an R-rated unit. I mean, obviously he's not as OP as Pisama. Pisama can also like, strip buffs on the first skill and also has a chance of like, um, resetting skills and stuff. But yeah, this is essentially it. I don't know, that uh, seems pretty cool to me. Uh, let me know what you guys think, uh, whether I made any mistakes, do type it in the comment section if you've liked it. You know, if you like the video, do leave a like, comment, subscribe. If I made any mistakes, do point it out, you know, because, you know, we're all human and I'm like, big mistakes all the time, right? And I don't know, like, everything about the game. I only know what it is that I've read and what people have told me. So yeah, I'll try my best to push out more videos. Uh, enjoy the rest of reset. Oh, uh, sorry. Enjoy the rest of the maintenance. This is Zaf signing out then, and and good luck to summoning your susabi or whatever it is like after maintenance. Till next time, guys.